Hi everybody! Hi Noga! Hi Gil! How are you doing? Okay. Very happy to have you here for another Q&A video and we're gonna get right to it, right? Let's go to our first question to Rebecca. Hi Rebecca. She wants to know what do you think of the idea to save humanity? It means magic must be completely destroyed and with that the giants, the dire wolves and the dragons. In this channel we have been pushing this theory for a very very long time that in order for the chaos to be resolved, we have to go to the root of the problems. And one of the problems is the fractured nature of this kingdom. And the other one is the magic. It's just like unexpected. It's too powerful. It's unstable. Those two elements, I think, must be destroyed. <laughs> I like order. I mean, it's interesting because it's part of the whole concept of uh, disenchantment and disillusionment and uh, this kind of like uh, process that all the characters are going through. Yes, it's very so, really nice. Thank you. Okay, let's go to next question to Surabi. Hello, Surabi. From Twitter, she wants to know what role does Arya have to play in the Great War? Right, this is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Yeah. Is she going to fight the White Walkers? Seems weird, right? There is something about the Red Woman. She told her that they'll meet again. I mean, it's going to be something like the plot lines are going to meet again at that point, I think, with the Daenerys and John and Arya. And because uh, uh, John and Arya haven't seen each other yet, also. I remember like, my bold prediction from like three years ago was not really specific. I think she's gonna ram the storyline, the, pr the plot line, like a bus coming in from nowhere, something unexpected, boom, and just change something. I don't know, Cersei's on her list, right? but I think that Jamie's gonna kill Cersei. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Please mention in the comments. We're dying to know, dying to know. Next question from our dear patron, Shai Golan, who we've met in our uh, Tel Aviv meetups. Hi, Shai. Hi, Shai. Hi, Shai. How about psychoanalyzing Hodor? Yeah, interesting. Hodor. Hodor. Well, he's a simpleton, right? But he's basically, he's someone who feels more like he's locked in his own mind or his own right. body. He had a stroke or something. He had a stroke, exactly. I mean, we know that he can understand certain contexts because he can respond in an in a in a like an eloquent way you know in a con <laughs> contextual way like right. in, through his intonation right. of course not through his, the content right. of his words hold on you mean you sweet giant <laughs> hold on so what is it like to be that kind of person locked inside your own mind well you also have another theory about it right i mean uh, <laughs> odor's uh... right that he knows mm -hmm how he's going to die because he didn't have a stroke really he just saw what would happen to him in the future when I think he knows, he thinks maybe it's coming now, he gets really, really anxious. Mm -hmm. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! So what would it be like for a person to know how he's going to die and then still go ahead and do it? Well, it's someone who obviously doesn't think they have a choice. It's like a predeterministic notion of life. I mean, because otherwise he would have, you know, he would have gone a ho in a whole other direction. Right. Just by yeah, hold or like, uh, <laughs> trying to to escape his uh, destiny, you know. Right. As in, but uh, but he doesn't do that. So I guess it's uh, if if he does know that he's going to die, there is something very rigid about it, like very, you know, like this acquired helplessness, maybe because he was born, you know, a servant ah. and not a lord, and there's this kind of like lack of self uh, agency. I mean, all ah, kinds of things, I mean, we can oh, assume. Oh, I like we, it. Yeah, we think so, we don't know, because he doesn't ah, talk. Do I mean... Want, oh, no, yeah. Now I want to do a Hold Her on the Couch video. So it's interesting, mm -hmm. like, in a lot of stories, there is a prophecy, and, and mm -hmm. you are told, this is what is going to happen to you. And then the character does everything it can to not get there, and then eventually this is how they get there. So, mm -hmm. so in this way, he's like... Makara Bataria? So maybe he was like, okay, I read all those stories. That's, it's gonna happen anyway. So boom, I'll just, I'll just do it. Okay, next question to the Haynes man. Hello again, the Haynes man. Noga, could you do a psychoanalytical take 
on Gil and Itamar as well. You're being filmed. Oh, well, like the relationship or? No. I mean, I actually had never met Itamar. Right. But... Psychoanalyze his character from the videos, boom. Right. I mean, it's a, well... Oh, the good of Shalom Kasham in the You don't want to do it? No, I don't want to do it. Okay. You want to psychoanalyze me to my face? Oh, it's like, you, you know, it's a wish that everyone has, but I know you too well. You're too much, uh, you're too complicated for me in that sense. I don't want to reduce oh. you to a certain... Uh, theory. Theory. Okay, okay, let's go to Bryn Jones, dear patron. Hello, Bryn. He wants to know, would you have treated Tony Soprano? Hmm. Would you? Yes. Yes? Well, I mean, I, I guess, well... Maybe, well, it's difficult for me, I guess, to differentiate between his character in the series and, and, uh, and like if someone just approached me and said, would you like to treat this like kind of a gangster guy, okay. you know, as someone that I wouldn't, uh, I guess it, I would be, um, well, why? that's a very, why? why, because I would be intrigued by him. Uh, he's a sociopath. He's a, socio a sociopath. It must be fascinating work. It is. But, I mean, it's very difficult to, you know, what is a sociopath? I mean... But uh, who's a true sociopath? We talked about it with Ramsey and with others. Little Finger, Little Joffrey. Little Finger. Often, it's so difficult to change anything. Right. But, uh, but on the... You should help him. That's like uh, uh, yeah. the conclusion of the show. And that's what Mrs. Melfi, Dr. Melfi, finds out. That she's basically been helping him be a better gangster. Yeah, that was one theory. It's a difficult question. I would have to think more about it. Oh, okay. I was, I was not expecting that. Let's go to Dakma Amkad. Boom. Hello, Damka. Dakma. Is there any way you feel the show did better than the books? Like a scene or a character you thought was handled better somehow? The books and the show? Well, you know, since I know most of the books by heart, and uh, I can quote the whole second. You have not watched the books. No. We have not read the books. No. You have watched them, though. <laughs> I have watched them, yeah. I have them in my... Uh, but, uh, and I watch them every day very uh, religiously. So I think there are, there are several parts that uh, they did better off the top of my head. No fire! The Hound's uh, plotline and Brienne's plotline. Brienne's plotline in the books is very, very boring. You know she's going nowhere. Mm. And then they meet up in this battle. I really like it. Let's go to our patron, Tom Paget. Hello, Tom. <coughs> he wants to know, are you hyped for the Game of Thrones prequel on HBO? Are you hyped, Noga? I'm very hyped. This is what you look like when you're hyped? This is me looking super hyped. <laughs> I'm very hyped. I'm very hyped because I think it's going to be better than season eight. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to be rejuvenated, rejuvenated. Let's go to Reginald Young. Hello, Reginald. He wants to know, what would you do to solve all of the world's problems? Noga, come on, I'm waiting. Okay. Please, everybody wants to know. Okay. One, two, three, go. So, I mean, in the Game of Thrones, they have the sentence. Uh, in the Game of Thrones, you either win, win or you, you die. die. So this to me resonates that, that you know, that the master-slave binary of like uh, Hegel's. Okay. Uh, so what he said basically is that uh, uh, there is a struggle between two sides and it's either you win or you die. <laughs> this kind of thinking doesn't work. Doesn't help. Doesn't also. help. Creates problems. It creates a because, lot of problems. Because if you think there's no other solution than to fight, then you are more likely to fight. Exactly. And uh, there's also this kind of like thinking that you have to have 
an asymmetrical relationship between oppressor and oppressed, because right. between uh, weak and strong. Right. If I don't kill him, he will kill me. Yeah, exactly. So you might as well be the, the, the strong one and kill yeah. him before he does kill you. Okay. So this kind of thinking, I think it doesn't help. I mean, so what, you would change that? I would change that into like this conclusion that uh, we don't have to, you know, be, kill or be killed. Let's uh, get along. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What I would do is two things. I would just like uh, cancel all the nation states and we'll go back to city states and everybody can rule, rule themselves better, more efficiently. And it's just like less uh, stories about history and all kinds of stuff. It's more pragmatic and practical, like your mayor takes care of the pavement outside. It doesn't mm -hmm. tell you a story about Tel Aviv, blah, 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 a little bit, whatever. A second thing, I would take every young person, whatever, at the age of 10 and fly them out of space to watch the entire world and understand how it looks without the borders. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Okay, thanks, Noga. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you want to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Academy. We'll see you there, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, man, we're going to check check. אמרנו שש וחצי, אנחנו לא רק שש וחצי, אנחנו פחות. אמרנו שש ורבע. אמרת שש ורבע? כן. אני אמרתי שש, ואז אמרת שש ורבע.